Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about introduction to slicing in Python, how to slice through strings and lists, slicing syntax in Python, identification of an item in a list using enumerate function, passing a non-argument. We're going to also learn how to slice through from the left hand side and the right hand side. And lastly, we're going to learn how to reverse a string. Slicing in Python is a feature that enables accessing a sequence of strings, tuples, and lists. You can as well use them to modify or delete items. Understanding slicing through strings and lists in Python. Now, um, slicing, slicing through Pythons, there's a syntax, syntax that um, you can use to get this. And this is how the syntax is being represented. Now for the start, start is an index specifying at which position to start the slicing and the default for this is zero. The end or the stop is an index specifying at which position to end the slicing but it does not include that specified number. And for the last we have the step which is optional. Um, is an index specifying the step of the slicing and the default for this is one. Okay, so let's carry on, uh, we'll play around with this. In Python, when counting from the left hand side, it's the, the default is plus. But counting from the right hand side, that's backwards, it's the minus, it includes the minus sign. So when you're counting backwards, you have to make sure you include your minus sign so Python can identify or understand what you are seeking for. Same goes with the left hand side. The left hand side is a default. It doesn't have to show, but a default sign of the plus is what is there. This is an example of what we are going to show working on slicing in Python. Okay, so we have a list of strings and a list holding um, a value here. We have colors as a string and letters as a list. We're going to work on this. All right, so. Um, if we, if I want to get a letter W, this is what I'm going to do out of the list, if I want to sort that out. So I'm going to go with this, color, and my brackets, in order to, like I said, the bracket is very essential in trying to grab a string out of uh, of a list so the brackets are used to access characters actually in Python it's very necessary you have to make use of it so I will now I'll put the number of the digit of that string and the digit below that string is 5 and Python is going to fetch that for me let me just put the answer so we can also see the answer below. Okay, so I'm going to run this. All right, we see that here. Now Python has fetched it out for me. Okay, 
so let's try another example now this is just the first stage the single out way to fetch um, a string we're going to go further to the stop and end the stop end and the stepping okay so let's try the next one I could decide to get the string build okay the string B sorry so say print color the brackets and the digits below are B is 7 okay always make sure I put so that we don't get confused all right do we see that so this is just an easy way to fetch out a single item from the list as easy as that you can also try and there's something I would want you to also understand in Python the space in between is also Python also attaches a digit to a space in between a, a string or a string of sentence so this looks like a two words and there's a space in between so that is not left out python will always attach a digit to a space in between a string so if i decide to pick out that space in between the yellow building it's going to be an empty string okay so let's see how that is going to be print color and that is six our result is going to be an empty result all right did you see that so here is empty okay all right okay so let's get on to the next one identified an item in a string now this is how a string looks like and this is a list the difference here is a list is governed with a bracket like this and a string is just standing alone with the quotes beside them so that is the difference but you can it's still the same way to access a substring in in a string or a list okay so let's um let's identify or let's sort out a, a substring from a string here i could decide to get a substring b out of it and below our b our digit is seven and this is what i'm going to do okay so that color and seven all right I'm just going to attach the answer to it first so we can also see it below and I'll run this all right there it is B I can also try another one I could try to fetch out a substring W and oh sorry a substring Y and our digit below our Y is zero Okay. Attach my answer to it. And then run this. And that is it B. Okay, let's play around with the last one. I could also try to sort out um I could say our substring W and that's it and the digit below our W is five. Okay, and this is it. And we'll run this. Good. Okay, so let me take this out or just comment this. All right, so let's work with the list. So they are almost the same thing. You could have a sub, you could have a string or a list. So they're basically they are actually the same way ways of sorting out a string out of a sorting out a substring out of a list out of a string sorry excuse me okay so let me say print 
I'm, I'm working on the list now. Prints, letters, brackets. Um, okay, so the I'm going to fetch out five and I'll digit below alpha. Uh, I'm going to sort out W and the digit below my W is five. Okay. Let's get your answer here. I'll run this. There it is, W. Okay, so let me try the next one. Say letters, brackets, and I will go for E, and the digit below our E is 1. And I run this, E. Okay, so as easy as that, this is how to identify a single item from a list or a string. String. Okay. Next is how to identify an item using the enumerate function. Okay, so I'm going to just give a line of code on how to access or attach digits to a string that's in case you're unsure of the number of string you have you have you have to use as a code to identify them so this is how i make this work i'm going to use this line of code is an inbuilt a built-in function in python that we just run here okay so i'm going to say uh, first of all, let me explain what an enumerate function is. Now, enumerate is a built-in function that helps you to return each item with its index position efficiently. I'm going to say that again. Enumerate is a built-in function that helps you to return each item with its index position efficiently. So, I'm going to use this line of code to do that. This is what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to use the for loop, okay, index color enumerate and say yellow building. print index color okay so let me explain this line of code here so for index now I have color okay in enumerate like I explained earlier what the enumerate is so we're going to attach index in the color now color is the variable holding this value yellow building so I am seeking for Python to attach an index number to those values that are there for me and I've stated out the values here yellow building and I want Python to print out the index number for me all right so let me run this okay can we see here we can see here let's see how many digits do we have here so far starting from 0 to 14 in Python like I said starts the counting starts from 0 and here we have 0 to 14 and our yellow building is here as a string now look at this in between I said every space in a string is uh, is also a necessity Python will also attach a digit to every given space in a string so if you're going to do a countdown or if you're going to be doing a countdown you have to include the space in between as well so this is how to attach a digit to a string in Python 
using this line of code there are other various ways you can use there are other various line of code you can also use but this is the one I chose to work with okay let's get back to our slicing so in this slicing we're going to work with the start and stop syntax here so um, I'll be getting a word out of I'm going to be working with words now sorting out a word from a list here using the start and the stop okay now we're going to do away with the syntax like I showed previously how the how the syntax is being um, represented so let's work with it now so we have print and I say I want to sort out the word yellow out of my string okay so I say color and then okay so like I said from start and stop now if you look closely I want to fetch out the word yellow and my first letter starts with the number zero and ends with five now like I said when you're counting for the end the end puts the for the end the end puts the number but does not include that exact number you have to attach a higher number ahead of it well let me clarify that again like i said an index is an index specifying at which position to end the slicing but it does not include that specified number now python is not going to include that specified number you want it to end with so you have to put a number ahead of it of that digit in order for python to grab the last one behind it so this is how it is when you put that number python subtracts one from it to give you a result so let's work with that so i could say i want my counting or i want my okay i want my counting to start from zero let me call in in six Okay, sorry, I made a mistake here. This is going to be a bracket. All right, so that is it. And my result here. All right, so look at this. Like I was saying, I now you see I put the six. So this six here, Python is going to subtract one from this to give me this R uh, five here, and that uh, digit is five and our substring is w so this is what again it's not going to stop at six it's going to stop at um five okay so let's run this all right you see yellow okay if i had said um well it's still going to be the same answer because um okay no it's not all right so let's 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 work with this here print color if I decide to put it like this I'm not going to get my actual result I say five okay so let's run this now you see Python will always subtract one from the end or the stop syntax there so you have to include a number ahead so that python can subtract one from it to give you your actual results so this is this is how this works here so this is the start starting from zero okay so i wanted python to start my counting from zero and end in six minus one so this is our results here all right so let's work with more examples okay 
I could decide to um, do building. Now, our building our B here starts from 7 and ends in 14. So if I'm going to do this in order for my G to be displayed as well, I will have to pick a number ahead of 14 and that is 15. Okay, so let's try this. So I would say print, print, color, starting from 7 to 15. Now run this. Alright, you see that? Okay, okay. So if I want to include all of this string, I could I would say print color starting from zero to fifteen. All right, you see that? So everything is displayed here. Okay, so it's just as easy as that. We can also try more examples. Okay, all right, so let's try more. We can also play around with more. I could decide to pick a sort out a word, yell, and this is how it's going to be. Print, brackets, oh sorry, color. Color. Hmm. Put this down so we can see this clearly. Okay, print. All right, so I'm going to start from zero. Um, what does that end? Okay, so I'm going to pick my four minus one. So this is going to end at four. All right, yo. I could say low. Okay. All right. So I could also decide to sort out a low out of it, and then say starting from three, and I want it to end at six. Okay. Alright, so let me just put my answer there, and this is going to be low. I'm going to print this out. Alright, so we can see our result here. This is, this is our result for start and stop. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to include the step. Now, this is the main. Um, slicing syntax in python okay we have the start the stop and the step okay so we are in the step now and like i said previously i said stepping is optional but the default for stepping in python is one step but you can decide to increase it that is your preference so this is optional like i said I, and I'm going to say that again for stepping is an index specifying the step of the slicing and the default is one okay so let's work with that all right so let me take this away um, let me take this out all right so how I want this okay so I'm going to say print and I will want Python to print for me um, starting from zero to end in 15 but stepping in twos okay let's start with one first one is default Start from zero. Okay, let me specify what I'm working on. Color. All right. So let's start with the with this one first. We did that previously, but just for clarity's sake. All right. So this is it. Our full yellow building. Okay. So let's type in twos. Print 
color starting from zero and that's 15 and step in twos all right okay let's just work this out you see starting from zero we count zero one two so we start from zero our first one is going to be y and the second one is going to be okay well let's just run this so we don't waste so much time and this is what python is going to do here all right can you see that now let's go back to our variable and our value here this is the string here so let's count it looking at it so the first one is starting from zero and our zero here is y and we count in two so y is gone and we have one two and the next is the l which we have here so we have the next one one two which is our o and the next one is one two now you can see the six is the next number and there's a space in between an empty string so that is why we have a space in between here please don't get confused like i said python will always attach a digit to a space in between a string that is how it's being done here in python all right so our next counting starts from um, b one two and we have our u here and then next one is one two and l and the next one is starting from d one two our e which is here and the last one is one two our g which is this one so you can see python picked this um strings this substrings in twos now these are the steps we're talking about here it's going to pick every stop strings in twos so that is optional like i always said it's actually optional okay so let's try another example Let's try another example all right so let me look at this Let's say print color say one python to start from seven stop at 15 and step in twos now where do we have our seven our seven starts from b so b downwards is what python is going to count for us okay and it's going to be in twos all right so let me run this all right so can we see the answer here so python here starts from so the counting here starts from seven and you're counting twos one two the next is our i one two the next is our d one two the next is our n one which ends at g and the next one is there's nothing there so python cannot continue counting so that is where it's going to stop for python so this is basically how you you count or rather you slice in python so like i said we have the three slicing syntax we have the start the stop and the step so depending on how you want it okay okay so let's um work with our list here like i said it's almost is the same thing so i could say print letters say i want python to start from zero okay and uh, the, let's say three stop at three okay let's just let me put it to five so that we can see the differences okay let me start with stepping in one first um so this is going to include six so we can see all of our strings six and this is a default okay all right so we have our yellow here in full okay all right so let's step into say print letters zero starting from this to six step two 
all right can you see that so python has picked that in twos for me so it's as easy as that okay okay so let me include um, um stepping in threes here for the yellow building because we have more words here in um, the yellow building okay all right so i'm going to say print color starting from zero stop at 15 and step in threes all right can we see that all right so this is um this is just as easy as how it is okay all right Okay, let's understand how to pass a non argument in Python. Now, the keyword non helps Python to sort non arguments in Python. If we say we have uh, print color and I say non, the keyword non to six. Okay, so our six here, like I said, our six is in between this place here. And I said starting from none, so it's not specified actually where. Let's say so. This is a default. Now it means there's no exact start command, so it results to default zero. That's starting from zero. Okay, so this is how Python is going to do that. It's just going to start from zero. That is the default setting. You do not have to specify anything. There's no command attached to it. It's just a default. So Python is just going to start from the beginning and end in the exact place you want it to end. The end is being specified there and that is what Python is going to do. Okay, so let's run this. All right, so this is it. Yellow is going to give me the same, the answer. It's the same as indicating a start command from zero ending in six so you can decide to say none all right so when you have a list or numerous list of strings and you are unsure the beginning of the string you can just include none because you do not know where um, the string starts from so you can just put none and put an end or a stop command and that is where python is going to stop for you it's going to start from the beginning and end in a certain number you want it to end so that is just how to pass a non-argument here it's as easy as that okay so we can also we can also do it this way this other way around Okay, so if I want Python to display all the items in the list starting from zero, this is what I'm going to do. It's the same way of passing argument with none. Okay, so I say color none. Okay, sorry, starting from zero to none. Okay, so this is it. I've included where I want Python to start my counts counting from from zero and ending at none so if you have a long list of strings and you have there's no specified number of the strings you can start from zero and end at none and python is going to give you exactly everything that is on the list this is how that is done here all right can you see that yellow building so this is how it is in passing an argument using the keyword none Reversing a string, it's um, actually counting backwards from a str counting a string backwards, and we are counting backwards from the right hand side. It includes a minus sign. Now, if you look at this um, strings here, if I'm going to do a counting, I'm from the back from um, if I'm going to do a counting backwards, I'm going to start from here the g and the g will hold the it will hold the index number starting from num uh, minus one 
this is not going to start from zero as counting from the left hand side so counting from the right hand side backwards sorry it starts with minus zero so if i want to get my um g here single out my g here i'm going to say print sorry let's say color and minus one Again, bring that out all right can you see that g that's because i'm counting backwards okay so if i want to get another one if i want to get my b here i would have to say print first of all i need to know um the this for that to say minus one two three four five six seven eight okay so that is our eight here I can say color and minus eight. All right, can you see that? That's because I'm counting backwards. All right, same thing goes with our Y. Initially, we had uh, 14 strings counting from the left hand side, so now it's going to be 15 because minus zero because there's no zero attached to it. So our B is going to hold the value of 15. Okay, so let's do that. Let's say print color minus 15 to give us our B. Oh, sorry to give us our y okay so that is um just how to um count from the back from backwards and if i want to get this in a reverse form if i want to get this whole string in reverse form i'm going to start with okay let me just put a reverse let's say print color and i'm going to use my double colon minus one so here is just where i wanted to start from the from backwards downwards okay so this is where it's going to get me here all right so you can see counted backwards for me starting with g here so it's still the same thing the yellow building all right so this is how you count in reverse form and using the minus the minus sign to get your answer Okay, so we have come to the end of this lesson for today and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do not forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. And please do not forget to also click on the notification button for more videos. Thank you very much for today. Thank you. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.